Okay, welcome everyone. This is another legacy video here on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be trying out the blue black Hogak deck that Namor Squats did well with in the Legacy Showcase Challenge recently. Um, so, what are we looking at here? This deck is an aggro deck that has a bunch of synergies in it. So, first of all, we have the Grief Package and the Reanimate Package. Um, grief and Reanimate has been, you know, tearing up Legacy for a while. You accompany that with Troll of Casa Doom, which bolsters your mana base. Then what's special about this deck is you're playing cantrips and free counterspells, which basically lets you not just fold to some unfair strategy. You actually have four griefs and eight counterspells um, for matchups like that. Then you have three snuff outs. I was told that it's mainly for... Uh, well, the fact that it's free, but it's also just so good against the Sticker Goblin, which is kind of making waves these days. Then we have Bowmasters, which is just a generically good card, and the fact that it's very good at convoking for Hogag. Uh, Hogag, remember, was all the rage and modern before it got banned. Hogag is essentially a zero mana 8 8 trampler that you can play from your graveyard as long as you have two creatures in play and some cards to delve. So that's what this deck is trying to do mainly. So to help that strategy, we have Stitcher Supplier, which is an unassuming 1-1 zombie. When Stitcher Supplier enters the battlefield, you mill three cards over. That means you almost have enough in your graveyard. You just need like a fetch land or whatever. And then you're basically ready to um, delve, pay, pay for delve and play a Hogak. The deck runs a pretty straightforward mana base with four underground C, a single basics, a single basic land, seven fetches, a couple of wastelands, which we'll get, get back to. And then one copy of Dryad Arbor. So why would you run Dryad Arbor in this deck? It's a green creature and can help uh, convoke for Hogak. So we'll have to keep an eye out for uh, that interaction for sure. And then actually to round out the deck, I think the deck ran something like Cabal Therapy at first. But I messaged the deck's creator and he said the therapies weren't really great, especially in an open field. So he wanted to try out a, a, cup, a couple of copies of uh, Stalactite, Stalactite Stalker, which is... Decent one drop, like you go fetch, play Stalker, it grows to a 2 2. The next turn, you mill with Stitcher Supplier or you, you wasteland and it kind of grows. So it just, it's some, some, some evasive damage that will hopefully help reduce the opponent's life total to zero. The sideboard of this deck is trying to address the rise of Red Stompy, it's trying to address Ley Lines, Married Lage, stuff like that. Fast combo, creature strategies, graveyard strategies. Great lands like Ursa Saga um, or Greedy Mana Bases, and then Chalice of the Void and Rhinos, I would imagine, for Powder Keck. Chalice of the Void, for one, is really a beating against this deck, so uh, we want to have a few answers for that. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll do it for the deck tech. I'm excited to play this deck. I, I, I played the more combo-centric versions back in the day, but those, those decks are just not viable anymore, in my opinion. You, you need disruption in your deck these days if you're playing like an aggressive strategy. And uh, yeah, we definitely put some disruption in the deck and I've signed up for a Legacy League. Let's play some matches. Okay, an opponent has been found. We won the die roll. I'm playing Demir, Demir Hogak. And this is a, just a straight up mulligan. If this land is any fetch or underground sea, we can keep it. But this hand, you know, has to cast a brainstorm to at least have a shot. So uh, yeah, we can keep that. We are going to keep this, though. I wonder what I'm supposed to bottom. It's probably just the Swamp. Let's bottom the Swamp. Opponents on a mulligan as well. I have a Daze. So I'll keep in mind that I will need, most likely, I'll need to fetch um, Underground Sea with the first one, then Troll for another Underground Sea, and then the second one can go get Dryad Arbor. I'm going to play Burden Catacombs turn one. So these lands are almost identical. Basically, I'm giving up the flexibility to go get basic Swamp with, with this card, but what, what I'm hoping to is, let's say my opponent plays some kind of combo deck, that they'll go for like their absolute biggest play, and I can maybe gain some equity with Daze. It's like a, it's a gamble for sure. Let's say I knew my opponent's deck. I would probably do it the other way around, unless I knew that they were, what do I know? Doomsday, uh, something along those lines. Hmm. Maybe we can delay this decision. I'm trying to think here. If I go... 
Fetch Underground Sea. Land cycle for troll. Uh, land cycle troll. Yeah, I, I think I'm actually gonna do that because I don't really care about getting wasted. We'll go find another underground sea. Then the question becomes, which land do I play this turn? And Hogag was a terrible draw. I think I'm supposed to play another Underground Sea, because there is a world where I, where I want to hard cast a Dace, at least have that option. Let's see what the opponent's trying to bridge into here. Okay, Ursa Saga, that's a good one. And Sphere Resistance, here comes the hard cast Dace. Three cards in my yard. But let's see. Troll. Five cards in my yard. Yeah, I, I, well, I need, a, I need a creature to, to even play that Hogak, so. Let's see if that's possible. Another Hogak. That's kind of funny. Yeah, that's not gonna... That's not gonna do anything. Mm. Yeah. We play against the lands. I mean, this draw is just obviously terrible. Tri triple Hogag isn't really what we were dreaming of this morning. So, in order for this deck to like do something, I would need, let's say, whatever, Bowmaster, Stitcher, whatever. And then, if it was Stitcher, I could fetch Dryad Arbor, play an 8 8. I think that's like the strength of the deck. The, the payoff for running bad cards like Stitcher, because when you look at the list, I think it's basically only. The Stitcher, that's like a quote-unquote terrible card. Um, so the price to pay for the Hogax isn't isn't that great, um, which which I like a lot. Like you're not playing a bunch of bad cards. Okay, the opponent goes for a wasteland here. Hmm. Am I supposed to fetch? No, I'm not gonna fetch. Let's see if I can draw something meaningful. The Dryad Arbor. Huh. Okay, so now the opponent goes for make a token, untap, make a token, search an artifact. Hmm. Yeah, right now my opponent doesn't really know what's going on here. But I think I prefer not showing my deck. I mean, I could play Dryad Arbor, which would technically be better. But I think my chance of winning this game is so small that I'm going to wait for, like, a Miracle Brainstorm um, rather than give up my deck here. I think that could benefit me a little bit for game two. The opponent's going to make one more token, then go search. I wonder what they go for here. Could be Mox Diamond as, like, the default target. Am I going to fetch with this Misty? Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna fetch this Misty Rainforest. I think they play Pithing Needle in the main deck. Hmm. Yeah, this was just... This didn't do anything at all. The start. I had the days. I guess I just drew a couple of Hogax. Where I should have drawn... Anything else, basically. Reanimate. Sitcher. Even Stalker. Eh, that, that's just what happens. The opponent did go for Mox Diamond. They now have three three constructs. Now I need, like, an awesome brainstorm into some good cards. I put back two Hogax. I have a nice turn. Otherwise, I think I'm in, in super trouble. Sylvan Library resolves, unfortunately. There's the Brainstorm. That's a good start. Let's see what that finds me. Okay. So, I mean, milling over double Hogag is super free. So let's mill over double Hogag. Hmm. So now I can go Arbor, Stalker, Play Hogak. Pass. 
Stalker grows. Yeah, th this is definitely not ideal. Like, this was supposed to have happened a few turns ago. Then, then, then it would be a real conversation, right? But yeah, this is just like a cool showcase of what the deck can do. And of course, we just need to do it a little bit uh, sooner in the coming games. Because this is a lot of like Trambler here, Menace Creature here. Like, just imagine we backed up by Days or Reanimate Troll or. A force will in hand or something then yeah i think this 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 deck is cool we just need a bit better tools okay crucible of worlds that's a lot of sagas incoming exploration my opponent has four fours wasteland is a cool one let's see what they decide to wasteland my one one okay 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 So now my opponent needs to decide between Ursus... Oh, they go for Maze of Ith. I like that a lot. Wasteland? Drawing Wasteland here would be awesome. We draw Grief. Okay. We draw Grief. Let's see what the opponent has in hand. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think we can win this. Maze, Maze of Ith was just too strong. Another Wasteland. So next turn my opponent can go like Ursus Saga... Wasteland, grind us slowly out. Okay, fair enough. Hmm, we were a bit too slow to to go for our game plan in that game. I think I'm gonna bring in Brazen Borrower as well. Let's see what we don't like here. I guess Snuff Out isn't very exciting. I only have four Wastelands, and I most likely have way too many like targets I want to hit. I think in border out like one bowmaster. I think that's reasonable. I'm sad that the opponent kind of you know figured out my deck or whatever. Question is if I want surgical and or negations. Let's see. Maybe I can like trim one hogag, trim one stalker. Also because my opponent has Caracas, which is super annoying. So let's see. Keep all the cantrips. Keep days. Keep force. Maybe a card like Negation is better than a couple of days. Maybe that's a good swap. And then I'll go for the Surgicals. Oh, I'm not supposed to cut Stalker. I'm supposed to cut a Stitcher. Yeah. Go down to three Stitcher. Uh, three, yeah. Three Suppliers. And uh, three Hogax. I think that's reasonable. Okay. This hand, this hand is fine. The thing about Hogag in this matchup is they have four crop rotations. That goes and gets uh, Caracas, and they have Maze of it on top, and I have to handle stuff like Ursa Saga, Merit Lage combo, etc., etc., um, with my Wasteland. So they're they're kind of overloaded in the matchup. But this is de this is decent. I like. I mean, I like the Stalker turn one. Um, I'll go for a two two Stalker. Then I can like look with Brainstorm turn two or develop Bowmasters depending on what my opponent does. I have insurance for a fast Merit Lage, which I like. My opponent's on a mold of five. A card like Ursa Saga is always super strong, but when you don't have the Wasteland, oof, I can really just run away with games, right? All right, turn two Stalker. Tell me what you got. Basic Forest. Exploration resolves. Opponent is thinking about their next land drop. Yeah, now I think it's brainstorm time because Ursa Saga is like such an easy way to win that game. Huh. Oh, well, yeah, let's brainstorm. See if we can hit something awesome. I kind of hit something awesome. Kind of. Hmm. So let's see. I feel like I want... Maybe I'm supposed to go, like, Grief Reanimate now. What does that take? I think it takes... Pitching Bowmaster? 
think I like that. Question is, can I also have the force available? Yeah, then I have to leave Hogak on top of my deck. Let's count, like, I need to be able to cast Hogak next turn for that plan to be good. So let me count here. Brainstorm is second card. Reanimate is going to be third card. Then I'm going to have a Grief in play. Hmm. So I can't... What if I, what if I force on my opponent's turn? Which I actually don't think I will. Maybe I'm supposed to put the Hogag all the way down. Yeah, let me just count here. Brainstorm is two cards in the yard. Reanimate is three cards in the yard. Force could be four cards in the yard. Okay, so we can put Hogag down. That's fine. Uh, yeah, like that. Then I go... Bowmaster. Pitch to grief. Grief my opponent. Then hopefully I can, like, remove my opponent's hand here. Let's see what they're working with. There's a life from the loam. Huh. So funnily enough, the reanimate isn't super exciting, to say the least. Hmm. Question is if I do it anyway. Is the clock? Yeah, I think the clock is super important here. That's annoying, not getting value out of this draw. Yep, you got me. Attack for two. Stalker grows. Now I have six power in play. So if I kept my um bowmasters, I could have If I kept my Bowmasters, I could have uh, killed the 1-1. One, one. Okay, I get Wastelanded here. So now I can actually... No, I'm not drawing the land, because I, I, I put them in the other order. Hmm, I could have thought about this, maybe. I need to force a will here, I think. If I thought about this runout, I could draw Hogak here. But instead, I'm drawing a land. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what I was supposed to do there. Now my opponent's gonna get... Eh, I guess my opponent has Maze of, Maze of Ith in rotation, so maybe that didn't help me at all. But I could have thought about the fact that... I thought I was one card short, but if I put Wasteland in the mix, it's something to think about. Oh, double Maze of Ith? Yeah, this is, this is terrible. Now my opponent can double, double Maze of Ith. I have a Hogag on top that doesn't do anything. Yeah, the opponent's just grinding me out here. The so just sometimes Loam plus Ursa Saga just wins the game, right? You can just dredge a little bit. Obviously, hitting double Mace of Ith is above average, but it's like a pretty normal game for the normal way for the land deck to win. My draw this game was pretty awesome. I was sad that the, the grief reanimate thing kind of came late. Just imagine having it turn one against a Mulder five, then the game's just over. I play Hogak, but yeah, it's uh, kind of getting getting a little late for that, especially because my opponent can go Dredge, get Ursa Saga going again, and from there it's going to be like super simple to, to destroy me. My opponent even has Tabernacle. Loam getting back some stuff. Yeah, th 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 this, this is just over. We got handily, handily dismantled by Lance. One game we didn't do a whole lot, and the second game we didn't do enough. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can do any better for round two. Don't go anywhere. Okay, welcome to the match. I'm playing Blue Black Hogak. I'm on the draw. And this looks like a keep to me. I have some Lance Cycler reanimation. I, have, I can dig for Hogak if I draw a blue card. I even have permission. I have a Wasteland. In case I need it. This is this hand seems to have a, a good amount of potential, I would say.
Question is if I go turn one Stitcher, if that makes sense. Turn one Stitcher. Hmm. Maybe that's not a bad play. Let's see what the opponent can cook up here. Tundra, okay. We're playing against Cephalid Breakfast. That's always a cool, cool deck to play against. You never really know if you're dead or alive against that deck. Let's see what my draw step finds. I could definitely see an argument for racing as fast as possible and not trying to play clever when you're playing against breakfast. Because no matter how you slice it, I need to deal 20 damage the fair way. So while I wait here, let me just read this card. For zero mana, the next one damage will be dealt to this creature is dealt to another creature. So let's say I want a bowmaster, my opponent has another creature in play, my opponent can redirect. Let's see if our opponent has the intention to play magic. Actually, I'll just I'll just pause and I'll get back when when my opponent's ready. Okay, Orcish Bowmasters, the draw for the turn. Hmm. Orcish Bowmasters, the draw for the turn. I'm going to go underground C past the turn here. Looking to cycle the troll. Represent removal. Play around, look like someone who's playing around days at least. Brainstorm is cast before I have Bowmaster mana. That's a wise move. I would love to draw a blue card. That would be pretty awesome. If I draw a blue card, I can just try and kill the Nomad on my own turn. Retrofitter Foundry. That's a cool one as well. So now I get to Cycle Troll. Draw a blue card. Come on. That is a blue card. I think drawing that blue card Highly motivates me to go Bowmaster the, the Encore. Okay. Yeah, I really like getting that Bowmaster down. It's like, it's annoying to play against. I put him past the turn. Okay. That That's a Stitcher Supplier. Okay, so now I can actually go... Do a pretty good job of looking for Hogak. I feel like I should do that. I'll go to 18. Stitcher. No Hogak. Stitcher. No Hogak. So, I can reanimate Troll or Grief here. Oh, interesting. I'll try and reanimate the Grief. I like disrupting. Grief resolves. My opponent's hand is terrible. Um, yeah, let's take the... Let's take the Shuko. I'm not too worried about the other cards. I'll attack with the Hoken. It's fine if my opponent wants to trade off here. It's a good way to... Like, I was about to say, it's a good way to kill time. Next turn, I'm going to attack with Stitchers and Grief. With the logic that if my opponent blocks Stitchers, not really the best. I knew about that Delta. They're down to two Brainstorms and an unknown card. Draw step is... I have a lot of good cards in this spot, I feel like. Let's see if we can draw one of them. Cantrips, more Bowmasters, more reanimation. 
Grief, Hogak, Snuff Out. I guess the counter spells aren't very good. Unless I can find Force of Will plus another blue card. I draw Hogak. That's a great draw. So... Let's play Hogak. One, two, three, four, five. I'm convoking with Bowmasters because I'm not sending that card in combat. Let's see. The opponent could have drawn Force of Will. And if they did, I think what I'm going to do is wasteland my own land to get to five non Hogak cards in my graveyard, then play it again. A cool thing about this deck is you can work his Bowmasters or Stitcher Suppliers to kind of look further for Hogak. That's kind of a cool interaction, in my opinion. Maybe my opponent is considering like a desperate brainstorm. At some point, that'll be the, the name of the game. I'll try and get in for four. Opponent takes the damage. Not sure Wasteland holds a lot of value against his duels. I'm going to wait for a Nurse's Saga. Yeah, my, my opponent is entering desperation mode here for sure. Instead, brainstorm it is. I'm going to get a 3 3, hit my opponent down to 12. But I guess that it is now, right? That my opponent has to do it. Hogag is coming in. Okay. Sure, buddy. So the thing is, my opponent's taking a bunch of damage, and they're most likely dying next turn. But I lose to, like, the combo and one piece of interaction. Question is, if at this stage I'm supposed to wasteland my opponent. Because I feel like the game is going to be over next turn. This is almost lethal. This is lethal. Yeah, let, let, let's try. I feel like if the opponent prolongs the game and develops Saga, it's just not... I, I, I can't see that situation. Okay, the opponent didn't find the combo. Well, to, to be honest, they might even be aware that I'm, I have Force of Wills. But uh, yeah, no, no way to tell, I guess. Fatal pushes seem great. But if, if the question is if six spot removal is too much. Um, okay, so I'm gonna remove one Hogak, one Stitcher. I feel like that's kind of that. That's like a cool uh, standard move. I would I would say. Mm, maybe I don't care about the basic swamp. Not sure about that. What about the stalkers? Maybe the stalkers aren't the best. Hmm. Gonna keep in the blue package. Then I'm gonna cut one more card. I mean, it is possible that I don't need all of these mana sources. Maybe I can just cut the swamp and it'll, I'll be fine. Okay, let's let's try this out. I think I like this. I think a big part of this deck's strength is one how you sideboard with it, and how your opponent's gonna sideboard with it because uh, against it rather because. Right now, on surface, I just beat my opponent down with, like, um, Grief, Reanimate, Hogak, like, very graveyard-centric stuff. So, I don't know, the, the context is, like, very big. Like, do you, do you think your opponent will begin with a ley line in play, or do you think the opponent will bring in, like, Surgical Extraction or whatever? Just different stuff like that where you can kind of take advantage. So, there's going to be two scenarios where you're heavily favored. It's like, if your opponent does not respect your plan enough, and if they respect it too much, right? And, and, and you're going to be favored in both of those. Okay, so we have turn one grief with reanimate. Let's pitch... 
Eh, I think I'm supposed to pitch... Yeah, let's pitch a Stitcher. Let's have a look at my opponent's hand. Okay, so what we can do here is we can... Go, say... Okay, my opponent, let's see what... First, let's see what they did with the Ponder. My opponent shuffled with Ponder. Um, okay. I guess this is fine. I, I get rid of a combo piece. I get rid of a plow. And then my opponent has Forcible Plow Scrubland. I think I like that. Then I'm going to start attacking with Grief. And I still have... Stitcher and Fetchland, which is kind of, and Brainstorm, which is kind of, all of those are helping me dig towards Hogak, which is like my real threat. Obviously, Grief is still, still a good threat. My opponent draws a card for a turn, and they're having a think about what to do here. They're down to Scrubland, Plow, Force of Will. When we enter, like, these kind of scrappy games... Both of both decks are kind of entering the plan B, so to speak. And when we're talking plan B, I don't really care about Force of Will. I don't have any card in my deck that's worth forcing, to be honest. Which is why I, I, I historically love these Hogag decks, where it's like you go turn one Faithless Looting, your opponent has to force it, or turn one Careful, careful Study. I mean, this card is embarrassing to Force of Will, but sometimes it's the right move, right? Okay, the, the opponent drew Brainstorm for the turn, so now we have less information about the hand, especially if a fetch land enters the equation. Ursa Saga, that's a good one. Okay, so now my opponent has Ursa Saga going. I'll definitely have to, you know, speed up a little bit. I think I'm supposed to use Brainstorm to speed up a little bit. Okay, I find Wasteland, and I find Days and Hogak. That's a lot of good cards. So let's put Hogak here, because then I can go Stitcher next turn and mill it over. There's no reason for me to have Hogak in hand. And maybe I'm supposed to hide one Stitcher, because... Um, I mean, that deck does run Cabal Therapy, so that would be brutal if that was the case. So let's just go Wasteland, the Saga... Get in for three, be ready to daze something if my opponent plays a two-drop. If they don't, then I'm going to play a Hogag next turn. Um, and that might get plowed, or my Grief might get, might get plowed, but that's kind of clearing the way for, for my future creatures, so I don't really mind. Like, as I said, the control game where my opponent has, like, Force of Will plow, Swords of Plowshares, I'll, I'll be fine in that, in that game. I'm scared about Saga, and I'm scared about the combo. I think, like, pound for pound, I'm a better mid-range deck. Could be my famous last words before I get, like, Stoneforge Mystic, Force My Days, Win With Cultura Completed, but that's how it is. Okay. Hmm. I think what I'm supposed to do here is just Stitcher right away. Maybe I play that card to play around days stitcher they hit the hogak can we get our opponent to play poorly here if i fetch i'll try i'll give my opponent the chance to plow i gave my opponent the chance to plow in response here to to, to you know try and try and get smart about it but they didn't hmm so now what I can do is I can go get Dryad Arbor, bring back Hogak, and attack for three. That's the most damage. I think I like that. So try and prioritize damage here. Hogak on the stack. Opponent is fine with it. Wonder... I guess it's just a Hogak hitting the, the bin here. Hogak gone. Attack for three. So 
So that the fact that I found Hogak lets me keep the grief and keep up the pressure, which I, I like. So now we don't really know if my opponent fetched away the scrubland or it's still in the hand, right? But we know that I was gone. We also know that the opponent keeps playing non-scrubland lands. Hmm. So I think what I'm supposed to do first is well, fatal push was a was a good one, so that the combo that just doesn't come out of nowhere. I can just I can just attack for five here. Maybe that's the play. I hold up fatal push. Okay, okay. I attack for five. My opponent could have another plow here, but I kind of doubt it. I think my opponent has forcible blue card, but let's see. My plan is here to kind of tempo out my opponent with the help of days and fatal push. I mean, I'm taking away quite a big a chunk of my opponent's life total here, so. Let's see if that's a viable strategy. The opponent takes the damage, goes down to eight. My opponent is fetching. After the brainstorm, if the scrubland, okay, no scrubland. So in theory, my opponent could still have the scrubland in hand. And they got rid of the force back then when they shuffled away um, with the previous brainstorm. Well, let's see. Retrofit or Foundry doesn't really do much. I'm fine with that card. I might Fatal Push. No, maybe that's not necessary. Let's see what we can draw here. I draw Grief, which is actually a great draw, because then I can pitch this Stitcher and see what's going on in my opponent's hand. That was actually an awesome draw, especially because the Menace is just so so strong against my opponent's poor defense. Okay, fair enough. The opponent concedes in the face of the Grief. Um, I guess what's going to happen here is I'm going to take maybe like their lone combo piece, then I'm going to attack. My opponent can block this. That means they go down to three, and the next turn the Grief is lethal, so... I guess it was a foregone conclusion. All right, we managed to take down Breakfast here, kind of showcasing the more, let's say, normal game plan of this deck. Not really like any broken hoke action in against, but just like solid scam package, getting the job done against some plows and some cantrips. That's kind of cool. All right, let's uh, see you guys for the next one. All right, next round is upon us. I won the die roll. I'm playing Demir Hogak. Let's see if I can do some nasty things. Yeah, I don't I don't really love this Dryad Arbor in my opening hand, but maybe it's okay because the rest of the hand is kind of okay-ish. I mean, I'm kind of leaning on this Bowmasters to be good. Let's see if that's enough. So I go turn one, develop fetch land. And then I kind of hope to either I don't know, wasteland my opponent out of the game or develop the Dryad Arbor and be kind of embarrassed about that or kill a Birds of Paradise with the Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah, I'm just, I'm dreaming now, obviously. Maybe not. Am I dreaming? Okay, I was dreaming. Elvis Reclaimer, it is. Okay, so we could be up against a few decks at this stage. Troll plus reanimate. Okay, I mean, that is a plan. So now I go fetch underground sea, cycle for underground sea, reanimate troll, pass. Unfortunately, no force of will. Let's see, let's see what matchup we're up against here. If it's something like Knight of the Reliquary, I could be in trouble. If it's Lance with a couple of Reclaimers, I could be in trouble. If it's the black-green, like, Cradle Toolbox deck, I could be in trouble. If, when this deck has 
not a fast hogak, no force of will. It's it can be tough, I think. Okay, so this could look like something like uh like cloud post or something, but let's see. Misty Rainforest, really not a good draw. I'll develop the wasteland, see what my opponent goes for with Reclaimer. I'll attack for six. So I have six plus six plus six plus one from Bowmaster, which is lethal, so that's gonna be my That's gonna be my my end game. Okay, my opponent sacrifices Yavimaya, goes and gets Basic Forest. Alright, I mean that's fair. I'm excited to see what the opponent's deck is. I think it's the Cradle. Uh, what? Okay, well, never mind. Huh. The Limmer Post. So now my opponent has three mana, which I'm not really scared about. I'm gonna play Bowmasters. My opponent's back to 13. So now I'm asking, can I can I play Hogak? If I fetch, no. What if I play? No, I can't play Hogak. <laughs> no matter how 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 hard I want to do it, unless I wasteland myself, I think, which is not going to happen against that deck. So my opponent got a little bit of life there from Glimmer Post, which is super annoying when it came to my original plan. I think if I remember correctly, that deck is sometimes leaning on the One Ring. So let's see here. My opponent sacrifices. Goes and gets what? Yeah, now now I feel like I'm I'm supposed to wasteland. But now my opponent can crop rotate. But I'm not making that any better by waiting here. I'm gonna crop rotate that land away, go get a new one. Which is unfortunate. I mean, this deck is super low on blue cards. Um, obviously, if I have a blue card here and I counter, I can't really lose that game, but I don't, so uh, we play on. When it goes, gets, gets the cloud post. Was I supposed to make Dryad Arbor there instead? Maybe it's pretty similar. Okay, opponent gains three life here. Goes up to ten, which is annoying. So now that my opponent has three, four, five, six mana. Expedition map. Another map. Okay. My opponent can crack two maps now. I feel like I need um I need a, I need my blue card like now. <laughs> or I'm in or I'm in big trouble. That's the blue card. Okay. Hmm. So if I fetch and I play Arbor. I can attack for six and develop Hogak. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Fetch. Arbor. Hogak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My biggest problem here is that it's entirely possible that my opponent and sniff out the Force of Will and go and get like Cavern of Souls with one of the lands. Let's see if that's the case. Four mana, sack a land. Sacrificing the forest. Huh. In order to go get. Okay. My opponent has a million colorless mana here. How much is that? It's like 10?
this is going to be either a big blowout and I lose or a big blowout and I win. Yabimaya, the land for the turn. Four mana, five mana, six mana. Primeval Titan. Force of Will. Resolves. Hmm. Yeah. That's probably pretty good for me. The, the, the sad thing is that deck has access to Cavern of Souls, so, I mean, I can just easily lose. Easily, like, the, the Force of Will was just situationally strong. It's not, like, winning the game or anything on a, like a, on a regular basis. But it's situationally strong. I'll, I'll say that much. Okay, so I guess we just sent the team here. My opponent can gain five life with block and glimmer post. They want to prevent four damage, gain five. Go to nine, take four, take ten, take thirteen. Not quite sure what, what the plan is here. Let's see if I missed anything. Alrighty. We take down we take down game one versus Cloud Post, which is not something you can you can take take for given. Like that deck is super resilient. Hmm. Snuff out. I need these wastelands. That seems to be a recurring theme. Maybe I'm fine cutting a swamp and then cutting one card. Wonder what that should be. The Bowmasters is probably not that strong, but I think they have the One Ring. Maybe cutting one... Hmm. Could also be a Stalker. I think I'm just going to keep the three Snuff Outs as only removal. Maybe I'm just supposed to cut a Stalker. The, the Bowmasters is... At least it helps, like, convoke out Hogak. It isn't, it isn't the best, obviously. So let's see. Surgical is awesome with Wasteland on Outpost, but also very bad alone. Okay, I'll I'll try this out. So basically, I either want to like overwhelm my opponent with Wasteland and Beatdown, or I want to have like some kind of disruption, like snuff out your Reclaimer, grief your hand, reanimate, grief grief another card, force will your Titan when when the chips are down. I think it's a tough matchup. Also, they're going to have, like, Endurance. Endurance is pretty annoying. Because it kind of stops Graveyard Shenanigans. It also stops some of my, like, bad, bad creature beatdowns. But let's see. I think this is anyone's game, to be honest. I think we can both Maybe, like, I can overwhelm that deck, and they can, you know, get to the mid-game and, and just dominate me, right? Yeah, I think, I think this, is a, this is a solid plan. The thing about what I, what, I, what I dislike about this deck is, first of all, the blue count is pretty low. And, like, for instance, in the matchup like this, on the draw, I don't think Daze is very good, but I can't really cut it because, you know... Uh, because of the blue count, so, because I, I I want I want a blue card for Force Will eventually, but I don't like days. So what I could do is like swap for some negation or something, but I, I don't think that card is very good either. This deck is pitching a lot to begin with, so I think when you bring in negation, it needs to be against pretty like pretty fast combo deck for it to be worth it. Otherwise, we just have a million pitch spells for forces for grief. Even negations on top. I think these negations are in the sideboard to, to make sure you, quote unquote, make sure you, you have one against uh, a deck like Reanimator. And, you know, similar decks, right? Where it's just so important to see the first one, no matter the cost. Okay, on the draw here, no Wasteland. 
But I mean, we have a ponder, we have a stitcher, so this can't this hand could be anything. Once upon a time. I like that card. I remember it was it was legal in like pioneer and modern. Is it banned in modern? I'm not too sure it should be, right? Uh, it was legal for a brief period of time. It was kinda kind of a strange strange card to have le legal, I think. Let's see. The opponent goes for some fetching into a basic land. They found Glimmer Post. Now they're going to name Wasteland off the bat here, which is fine for my hand because I don't have it. But could be very annoying. I think that deck plays like three or four needles. Th th that deck will just name Wasteland in the dark, like, happily. And if it's... If it, if it hits, great. If it doesn't, then yeah. It, bottom line is they don't get to play against Wasteland when that's in play, so that's the most important thing. They could also find some awesome play here and go Verdant Catacombs or Misty. I, w I wouldn't I wouldn't like uh Verdant Catacombs name here. One is in the tank. I do have all of my four wastelands in the deck, ready for a matchup exactly like this. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Thank you for stopping by, it means a lot. I've been having a ton of fun with kind of re... well, not relearning Legacy necessarily, but just uh, experiencing Legacy from different point of views. I really like that. Let's see what the opponent decides on. Hitting Needle, Naming. The easy one is Wasteland. They even saw Wasteland the other game, so it's not like they're guessing whether I, I have that lead card or not. But, yeah, who knows? All right, the opponent, uh, I guess, had connection issues, never named anything on the needle, so we take the, the W, not, not very awesome gameplay, but I guess we take it. All right, guys, let's play one more match with the Hogag deck. See you there. All right, we're on the play with Dimir Hogag. Never gonna say no to that. Hmm, what, what can this hand do? Are we supposed to cantrip turn one or stitcher? I think we're supposed to cantrip. It's pretty cool we have the days as well. It's kind of a compact draw. There's also the opportunity for me to ponder into something like grief, so I can grief turn one. Opponents on a mulligan, which makes it even more like interesting for me to grief grief turn one. Honor hits the stack. Also, I only have one land, so I might want a second one if I can, if I can help it. Hmm. I don't like these cards. Like Dry Arbor is bad. Brainstorm I already have. Bowmaster I already have. So let's go ahead and draw a new card. Huh? That is. That is a grief. Okay, I'm going to grief turn one here. So funnily enough, for, I was about to say this is a mirror match, but it, it, it really isn't. Hmm. So here we have... Days, double street wraith, which could be anything. Death shadow, so let's see. Cycle, cycle, fetch. That's down to 13. The opponent goes Stalker. I think I'm supposed to take my opponent's Daze. No, maybe not. I can Daze my opponent's Daze. Hmm. So maybe I go for... What about going for just Death Shadow? Am I scared of the Stalker? Well, maybe I am. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take the stalker. 
And then most likely I'm going to grief away the death shadow from my opponent's hand. Hmm, this hand was actually kind of tough to play against. Also, let's cross our fingers our opponent doesn't, doesn't find a reanimate. Because then I get griefed with days back up. Okay, the opponent passes the turn after one cycle. Huh. So let's try and reanimate grief. The funny thing is, my opponent didn't tap out, so my daze is, is not really live. I mean, it kind of is because I can daze my opponent's spell to get the land back and then reanimate once more, which I think I'm going to do. My opponent pays. I can't pay, but what I can do is reanimate once more. Take my opponent's best card and start clocking with Reef. Oh, I get forced here. Okay. Ah, that's nasty. Because now my opponent goes Water Grave, Death Shadow. Or even Fetching. Opponent's at 9, they play out a 4-4. Four, four. Two cards left in hand. Do I know anything about those? Not that. Not that. Not that. I don't know. I don't know my opponent's hand. Hmm. So I think this is a good spot for me to go Stitcher Supplier. Hope to hit uh, Hogak. So what I'm supposed to do here is go Stitcher Supplier and then respond to the trigger by getting Dried Arbor. It's just like some fail rate that would just be so annoying. Okay, no, no, no Hogak in sight. That would have been very awesome to hit there. I wonder if I'm blocking here. If I block, I dig for Hogak, but I can't cast it, right? So I think I like just taking the damage at least now. Okay, Stalker. So now the opponent actually should have done it the other way around, right? With the Water Grave last turn, now Bloodstained Mire. Bowmaster, the draw for the turn. So now it can become a little bit tricky. So what I can do is attack for one, which is not super helpful. Then I get attack back for five. Hmm. Maybe that's fine. So right now, I'm basically trying to... I think I'm winning this game if my opponent doesn't have a Marktide Regent. But if they have a Merkshed region, I'm not really winning this game. I guess I play Snuff out. I like the Brainstorm here. I can go and look for Hogak. I can look for... Yeah, I guess that's more or less it. Let's see what my opponent can do here. Snuff out the Dryad Arbor. I like that play. My opponent's at four. I guess they don't attack if they reveal the Snuff out. Now, then they would have attacked first, then Snuff out. Yeah, okay. I draw that card. That's... that's Kind of, yeah, I don't know about that. Let's play Brainstorm, see what happens. Hmm. My opponent's at four, so... I think I like attacking with Stitcher, is that true? Yeah, let's attack with Stitcher. I do fetch because there's no Hogak in the top two. My opponent blocks. This is kind of tricky because my opponent doesn't have a lot of time here to, you know, keep taking the damage. I'm going to go to 14. I'm going to mill over three cards. No Hogak. 
Hmm. So this Bowmaster is kind of lethal. Let's see what I can draw. I draw Hogak. I mean, that's an, uh, an amazing draw. Let's cast Hogak. Cast a turn. Wasteland is a good one. There's a chance I should have played this Bowmaster out before. Let's say my opponent just draws days there for the draw step. Maybe that's a bit hazardous. Yeah, that... After that first exchange, I'm actually surprised I won this game. I guess I got pretty lucky with... with some stuff along the way there. Okay. Close one against Shadow. So... I like the pushes. The pushes are awesome. So let's have those. They play reanimate, so let's have those. I don't like Force Will against that deck. So now I have a bunch of spud removal. The thing is, three snuff outs for their their like three Merc Tides. I could see cutting one as being the, the correct play. Raisin Borrower. Yeah, that's way better, like well rounded card if I'm trying to answer. Answer Merc Tide at some point. But. Hmm. Yeah, I guess this is fine. I don't care too much about days. What about Death Shadow? What kind of removal do I have for that card? Maybe I want the Powder Kegs even. Let's see. You play it the next turn, you can kill Shadows. I'll try. I'll try those. Maybe over my own stalkers? Is that correct? No, maybe maybe just over the dazes. Let's go. I cut all counter spells and try and beat them the old fashioned way. No no bad counter magic. The thing about a card like Daze is even though I just have my four copies in the sideboard, it's still gonna have an effect on the game, which is super powerful when you think about it like that. The opponent plays first. I have this hand, and I mean, this hand is not exciting or anything, but I'm I'm gonna keep it. Any um, troll or blue source, this hand is kind of awesome, and I have a stalker and a push to, you know, do something in the meantime. Opponent goes turn one stalker, goes to a two two right away. I do draw the 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 blue mana source, which I like a lot. Maybe it's just time to go my own Stalker. I could see that. Fetch Underground C, play Stalker. It's kind of annoying. I'm, I'm a bit weak to Wasteland here, but I think it's fine. It's not going to be obvious for the opponent that Wasteland's strong here. Gut Shut is a fun one. Gut Shut kills the Stalker. And the opponent's really working on the life total already. So with a Fetch Shock, they're down to 13, so they will need a Street Wraith to be able to cast Shadow, but that's not going to happen. Huh. I get Wastelanded, which is, which is sad. Then I draw Supplier. I think this is just where I, I Fatal Push the Stalker. This has gone on for a while. Can't really just watch this happen. My opponent has the daze, which makes sense on the play. It's like daze is great because it's part of your like nut draws on the play. You go basically what my opponent did, like the good old Delver Wasteland Daze. Now it's just a stalker instead. It's the it's the same thing essentially. Hmm. So let's see what I can draw here. If I draw something like a fetch, I can play Hogak. That would be sick. I draw grief. Hmm. Grief. Maybe Grief is like a way back into this game. Maybe I'm supposed to pitch Stitcher, top deck, a land so I can go Bowmaster Hogak. Grief. 
Hmm, yeah, this is a big problem. Graveyard Trespasser, that's awesome. Hmm, so my opponent's gonna... My opponent can't play Death Shadow, that's actually important. So, I guess I take the days because of my plan. Hmm, okay. So I really need to draw... Really need to draw that land. Then my opponent can gut shot. Okay, my opponent found a land. Which, that's kind of sucks for me because... Then my opponent can gut shot me down to 10. Then play a 2-2 two -two shadow. Okay, they didn't want to do that, fair enough. Yeah, this is going to be too late. I'm afraid this is going to be too late. Powder kick. Powder kick, you say? Hmm. Let's see if my opponent gets frisky with the gut shot. No, then I'm actually dead next turn, I think. Okay, Wasteland. Yeah, Wasteland will, will do it, I think, because... Mm, let's see. I could waste it. I cycle... Yeah, then this Stalker is just gonna do it to me. Okay, fair enough. Let's go to game three. That was a bit too fast for my, for my taste. I like a couple of days at least here on the play. It's possible I should have more. I'll just take a look at the deck. I actually like the other cards better. I'll, I'll, I'll go with two days. I think that's reasonable. Okay, so my opponent has Gut Shot. I love Gut Shots. I haven't seen that card for a while since uh, Ragavan got released and everybody was playing like Ragavan and wanted to get a leg up in the mirror. Yeah, this, this deck has been pretty cool to play. I like how we can basically just be a, a scam deck with like an even harder to kill threat just out of nowhere. Mm, this hand is this hand is decent. I have some good like on the on the play this hand has a real plan like turn one stalker cross my fingers my opponent doesn't have a gut shot. I'm going to go for underground C despite I don't have any more sources because well waste landing um while on the draw is like trying to get a bit lucky in my opinion so let's see what the opponent has got going on here maybe stalker of their own no ponder okay we like that a lot then on my turn i can go wasteland stalker attack that's a lot of power menace even it's kind of, these reanimates aren't doing anything, but I guess they're keeping my opponent a little bit at, at bay. Wasteland. Stalker. Attack. And I have a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2 two, two Stalker. Also pretty funny, I play two copies and I've drawn both. Opponent's fetching. Fetching Underground Sea, casting another Ponder. Okay, so that Wasteland was really strong. That's interesting. On my turn, I really want to find a way to keep growing these Stalkers, because they're just winning the game right now. The, the thing is, I have to consider how equipped am I to face, like, double Shadow. Let's see what we can brainstorm into here. Very happy to daze my opponent's daze, if that's the case. Not sure they can risk that, to be honest. Setting themselves back quite a bit here. But the thing is about Death Shadow, I'm kind of helping my opponent's cause if I'm just attacking for chip damage. It kind of has to be, you know, good damage. Hmm. Okay, the grief is awesome. I missed that at first. Um... 
I guess I just put two reanimate on top of my deck. No, maybe just put one and a push. I guess I have to ask myself, what am I pitching here? What am I pitching for that grief? I feel like it should be a reanimate. Maybe reanimate isn't that great. Maybe I go... Hmm. I can't cast double Fatal Push anyway, right? So I think putting Fatal Push on the bottom, then reanimate on top, that leaves me the most flexible for next turn. Then I go... Grief Pitch Reanimate, because I'm not going to need that card. That's like my second copy. I'm ready to daze here. Yeah, this is the double shadow I was talking about. Hmm. So the good thing about the double shadow is I can at least daze the second one. But that's funnily enough also what makes... Oh, I can surgical the shadow. That's the play. Okay, so we grief one shadow, we surgical the other. Love that play. Grief one shadow, grief is dead. Get rid of the shadows. One from the yard. Okay, and, that, and that'll do it. Okay, fair enough. So that means I get in for five here. Then these guys grow. My opponent's at 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. Okay. <laughs> that was, that was, that, it, took, it took me a while to figure out like how to deal with the double shadow, but I guess grief plus surgical will, will do the trick. And uh, yeah, that, this, was, this was pretty cool. Like This deck was a treat to play. I kind of showcased like the normal, you know, grief scam. What what can that do? What can an eight eight coming out of nowhere do? What can the bowmaster do just as a hate bear or like enabler? And then in the last game here, what can uh, this this stalker do? Especially in multiples. I mean, my I play two. I was so lucky to draw two with a hand of like where it was pretty perfect. Fetch land, wasteland, grief. Like a lot of cards to grow it. Um, so maybe maybe this card is just better than I gave it credit for initially. I might want to try it out in like Grixis Delver or something along those lines. But yeah, with that being said, that's going to do it for today. I hope you like uh, Legacy as much as I do, and I'll definitely be playing it a lot more in the future. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. <laughs>